everyone, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, it's Linda. I'm Linda. Welcome back to my- Hi, it's Linda. This is my stomach. It does not equal health. Welcome I love back you guys to so much. What are you doing? 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 What are you Three years ago today, I posted my first YouTube video. It was the beginning of quarantine, and my days consisted of family walks, a lot of nothing, and watching YouTube. I grew up watching the OG YouTubers. That will always be hands down my favorite YouTube era. I idolized them, thought they were celebrities, a dream that I would never chase because it would never happen. While I was binging YouTube one morning, I stumbled across this girl's channel with like 5,000 subscribers who lived in a town beside mine, and I was shocked. I was inspired. I was like, if she can do this, what's stopping me? I used my mom's like iPhone 4 Plus and iMovie and uploaded my first video. It was painfully horrible, but it was the beginning. I had found my quarantine hobby after months of doing nothing. I finally felt alive. I was bursting with giddy energy, overflowing with ideas. I was in love. Every day was filled with new learning experiences. So much fun, so many first times. First commenter had a weird frog image as his profile picture. First day I made money was July 1st, 2020, $13.40. The first time I got recognized was at Cobb's Bakery. I remember my first 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000 subscribers. 10,000 sprinkles for 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> there, that's 10,000. My first paycheck, my first brand deal, my first all-nighter, my first mental breakdown, my first hate comment, my first hate video. Why did people want to watch me eat and sweat? Who knows? I never thought that people would ever want to listen to what I had to say. And it was really beautiful. It was very addicting. The creative process, the connection, the attention, growth, the money, the algorithm. The way that YouTube set up is so good at making you feel like you're just never enough. It became like an obsession to updo myself, to get more views, improve my editing, increase my engagement, stay consistent, work harder. And I'd get this incredible high whenever I'd outdo myself. And whenever I didn't, I'd get this nauseated, disappointed, hateful, disgusted feeling towards myself. I'm convinced I was just born with unreasonably high expectations for myself. This perfectionist thing, it doesn't mean you need everything to be perfect. It means always setting unrealistic standards for yourself that you can never meet. So you're never ever gonna feel enough. No matter how much more I had or did or became, I was still in some ways inadequate. Life turned into me just constantly looking for mistakes in my edits, my scripts, my actions, my past in my body. I don't know, I feel like in order to deserve like all the good that's come into my life, like I need to work for it. I I thought I had to prove myself with every video. I had to live up to the person everyone thought I was. I needed to always show up as a better, more healed, more inspiring version of me. My life became a huge YouTube to-do list. Like there was no boundary between living and working. I was doing both all the time. Every second of my day was consumed with creating a video, whether it was filming, editing, scripting, uploading, jotting down random ideas, signing contracts, reading comments. My life was about being the most efficient machine I could be. You know, maybe you can't handle as much as what you were handling before, but part of me is wondering where you have been handling things. We don't notice that we're running, we're going at 100. As we slowly increase speed, it just starts to normalize. It's not until we actually start to hit the brakes of like, oh shit, we've been going this fast. I sometimes think of my body was just on like fight or flight for like a year and a half. It's a survival mechanism. Your heart pounds faster, muscles tighten, breath quickens, and your senses become sharper. It doesn't have to be a bear attacking us. Our bodies can't tell the difference between the stress of something that's actually life-threatening or the stress of responding to 300 emails, financial troubles, trying to fit in 70 hours of editing, a full university workload, and social life into a week, or internal stresses like feeling as if you're not in control of your life or if you're not living up to expectations. Usually once a perceived threat has passed, hormone levels return to normal. But when those stressors are always present and you constantly feel under attack. That fight or flight reaction stays turned on and it can contribute to anxiety, depression, addiction, and a whole lot of other health problems. Before we dive into some potentially pretty sensitive territory, I just wanted to pause for a second and say that if you're struggling in any way, you don't have to do it alone. I'm going to be leaving a couple of resources and helplines in the description. And I also wanted to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. If you keep watching, you're gonna see how huge of an impact therapy has made on my life over these past couple of months. I didn't know how to cope with my emotions. I couldn't accept them. I was 
debilitated by them. I was so used to minimizing and dismissing my struggles because I tell myself other people have it worse. But pain isn't meant to be compared. I really, really want to share BetterHelp with you. It's exactly the type of platform I needed to start therapy. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, 100% online. There's a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists. And to get started, you basically just answer a couple questions about your needs and preferences in therapy so that BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist for you. you talk to your therapist through chat, text, phone, or video call, and message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist just happens to not be the right fit for you, you can switch with no additional charge. BetterHelp gives you the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist that's custom picked for you, more scheduling, flexibility, and at a way more affordable price. Also, you can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sun. And I've also linked them below in the description. It sounds like you're burnt out. Are you resistant <laughs> to accepting that? Tell myself to rest. I just can't. I just feel so guilty. I didn't notice at first. I think the signs are pretty subtle. For example, every little thing would put me over the edge. Stress eating, weight gain, inappropriate screaming and crying. I can't do it anymore. I can't. We have to keep going. Exhaustion, keep going. Trouble breathing, keep going. Panic attacks, keep going. And over time, after editing for an hour, I would need to lie down. Sometimes I'd lie down for an entire day, for multiple days. Every time I'd go on social media, I felt so unnecessary, useless, replaceable. I feel like every fiber in my body is just depleted. Like, I can't even like sit up. Why am I so weak? Like. I don't understand. I started to hate everyone and everything. I turned to food. It was the only thing that could make me feel better. The pressure I put on myself paralyzed me. What was the point, you know? It won't be good enough anyways. And then the guilt of not working ate me alive. I couldn't escape this constant loop of self-hate. I know, I know. What a little rich influencer girl. You don't know what it means to be He's struggling. To have real problems. problems. Oh, stop complaining. You're so privileged. privileged. <laughs> Trust me, I know. I have this conversation with myself multiple times a day. A great situation. Like, it's a luxury. It's the best problem you can have. It's not even a problem because it's a choice. So small. Everyone is dealing with them. Why can't I deal with them? I'm lucky to have this as a problem, but it's some, it's just a lot. And I feel like no one gets it. And I don't even get it. I don't know, I'm just like very unhappy. But I have so much to be like grateful for. You can be unhappy and also, it can also be true that you can be grateful for all the things in your life. I see you, you're unhappy. But like, I don't know why. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Everything. I don't know why. Truly, I don't have anything to be upset about. Let me challenge your black and white thinking that you believe call the grass is green. Why are you complaining mentality? Familial, like a childhood piece, right? Like, why are you complaining? Like, you have such a great life because you're not, you're, you're fed, you've got money, you've got, both things can be true. Like, you could still be okay, but also not be happy. You know how the more you don't let yourself eat the chocolate, the more you want the chocolate? The more I told myself I shouldn't feel this way, the worse I felt. So, yeah, I know how fortunate, how lucky I am to have these problems as my problems. But that is exactly why it was all the more painstakingly frustrating why I was so, so unhappy. And quite frankly, I didn't feel lucky. I was so consumed by my exhaustion and all the ways I believed I had failed. Just be happy. Just be grateful. It seriously felt like my mind was at war with itself. I'm so tired. I didn't recognize myself anymore. Actually, when I was collecting footage for this video, I had to go through some of my old content and it was like I was watching a complete stranger. In my first couple of videos, I had this light in my eyes. I had this energy and excitement. And gradually over time, I just saw that light die. How, like, did I go from this bubbly, happy, excited about life girl into this? It felt like for three years, I hadn't turned my body off, but I had convinced myself for so long that I didn't have time or deserve to stop. 
I was too privileged to stop. If I stopped, it meant I'd be giving up. That I was ungrateful, weak. Nothing would be worse than losing YouTube. YouTube was the most important thing in my life. Because at this point I had lost or given up the rest of my life. Almost every friend, my degree, my social life, my creativity, my boyfriend, my happiness, my energy, just so much time. So YouTube wasn't only the most important thing in my life, it was the only thing in my life. I just feel like I gave up very meaningful relationships in my life to do this job. That is an incredible job, but sometimes I miss what it was like before. I think that's normal though. It was all I had and it didn't even want me anymore. But I just keep pushing people away more. I don't have no one, but I don't mm -hmm. feel like I have anyone either. I think it's also become like my entire identity. I feel like if I were to lose this thing, I have absolutely no purpose. Like I have absolutely nothing. When you make your worth something outside of yourself, you can feel worthless pretty fast. The only constant thing I have in my life is myself, but the last thing I wanted to be was just myself. When I lost my partnerships, I was worth less. When I made less money, I was worth less. My growth plateaued, I was worth less. I gained weight, I was worth less. I can't do anything. <laughs> leaving school and I don't have a plan and Gymshark doesn't want me. Sure, what's what I'm all? You just can't walk. That means I'm not doing well. I feel if I was good enough, they wouldn't have cut me. Eventually, I went completely numb. I'm trying. I'm trying. My mind felt so fragile. I felt so incredibly alone, almost hollow. My mind, body, heart, and soul were exhausted. I don't know how to describe it, but it almost physically hurt to live inside my head. Like I was trapped in a corner and getting beaten up and bullied by my own mind. It's like I knew the things I should think and do and feel if I wanted to feel better, but there was this barrier, this fog, preventing me from feeling better. I couldn't see a way forward or out. Every day moved in like slow motion. I spent every day just waiting for the day to be over. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to explain how I'm feeling. I'm so grateful for my life. I wake up and I just, I'm so sad and so tired and so... I just don't feel like I matter and I thought things were getting better but I don't know why it's so hard for me to do like anything I know everything's gonna be fine it's just not fine right now and I'm gonna feel bad for a little bit even happy things don't make me happy anymore so that's a problem clearly Something needs to change. I hate myself for being like this, for thinking like this, for being so upset even when I have such a good life. I feel so weak. I'm tired. I'm so tired of it. Oh no, I don't know, I don't know. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be anywhere. I don't have anything to do in my life. Like, I don't even know where to start. Burnout can be paralyzing. 
physically and mentally. I felt detached from my own body. I had never felt so out of control before. I can remember feeling this intensely about one other thing. When I was hospitalized for my eating disorder and they told me I had to stop losing weight, stop starving myself and gain it all back and more, the devastation I felt. But I finally had a reason to stop. And I remember a part of me feeling so relieved. My eating disorder took over my life. Without it, I really did believe I was nothing. But actually, without it, I was able to become everything. Without YouTube, I believed I was nothing. But without it, I'm still everything. I mean, I'm hearing a really big flag of a burnout, which is called the withdrawal period, where you just want to be alone and you just want to get away. That means increased feelings of anxiety, guilt, shame, depression. And it just feels like a, like a fog. What's happening is that your body is exhausted. It's probably more exhausted than you actually, like, like multiply it by 10. Your nervous system has been overloaded to the point where you're essentially in system crash, where you're like, I just need to get away. It's a very negative thing, but we can also see it as a very positive thing because our body actually knows how to preserve itself. We, we, our minds push us as far as we can, but our body is like, no, we're done. I think that you need to do something that allows for you to truly rest. Ultimately, I had to come to this point where I had to convince myself I was just more important. I think I need to take a semester off school. I just like don't want to keep being unhappy anymore. Take some time off school. Don't think about, I need to do this. Just be like, I'm gonna find out what I want to do. Just like, take the, take the time to find out. Yeah. Like, it's okay if you just like stare in the ceiling and put you that way. In the back of my head, I think I'm scared that if I leave, I'm never gonna want to come back. It was very scary to stop, but it was even scarier thinking that if I didn't, I would have to feel this way forever. So I put down my camera. I slowed down YouTube. I got academic permission to pause my studies. I started seeing more therapists. I tried painting, reading, meditating, yoga, taking walks, watching movies, and doing nothing. And nothing happened. At least it felt like nothing was happening. I would spend, I don't know, three days taking care of myself and then feel so frustrated because it wasn't working. I still wasn't happy. I felt so guilty for slowing down and taking a break. I felt so unproductive. I feel like everyone around me is doing stuff and I'm a loser. I just suck. Like I can't do anything. Like, why am I just not able to do the things everyone else can do? I feel really guilty when I'm not being productive. I feel like I'm just worthless like i like what what's the point of existing if i'm not doing anything that's the problem like i want to be able to feel like i am worthy of just existing and not having to like, always prove that i'm like i deserve to be here but this wasn't supposed to be easy i've lived 20 years without knowing what it meant to have compassion for myself to really rest not be so hard on myself letting go of the significant part of myself wasn't supposed to be effortless even if it was for the best uh, doing social media influences like a job sounds really hard and confusing and, and it's a new job too it's unclear probably one of the best ways to do some of this stuff and a lot of people seem to really burn out seems to be the typical career path <laughs> i think you have to recognize that you're not well you're you're not taking a vacation you're not taking a break you're not like just deciding to be lazy yeah, it sounds like you're framing it in this way that you've just decided to like take off a couple of months for no reason. Taking care of yourself is productive. I just truly never saw my mental well-being as something important, so I never prioritized it. My list of important things included YouTube, my grades, money, more views, having a smaller body. Those are the things that matter. Those things needed caring for. But not me, not my self-worth, not my health, not my overall happiness, but the way you see and speak to yourself, the way you feel about yourself and feel in your own body, that is the most important thing. Taking time to heal whatever that looks like for you is productive. It may not look like what you've always thought productivity is supposed to look like, but without resting, recovering, and healing, you actually are not living. You're just like surviving. For so long, everything 
felt so heavy. I was exhausted carrying around all these expectations and the fear of failing and so many toxic beliefs. And it felt so heavy because I wasn't meant to carry it this far for so long. It was time to let go. So I started by selling all my clothes because honestly, it made me feel more productive without actually doing work. And this was so unexpectedly therapeutic. So for two months straight, this is the only thing I did, tossing, selling, and donating. And the more I got rid of, the lighter I felt. I realized I had filled my life and my schedule with so many things to make me feel more successful that didn't bring me joy. And it actually drowned out what mattered most to me. And that's not how success should feel. Productivity for me started to look like sitting in silence for 20 minutes with my thoughts, journaling, doing less, painting, crying, moving slower, being gentle with myself, and it won't work. Nothing changes, but it is. You just don't notice the process of healing, but you just keep picking yourself up and doing the things you know you need to do and taking care of yourself, even if you feel like you don't deserve it. But I still felt stuck, just with less clothes. I felt like I couldn't find a new perspective in the same place I had gotten lost. I thought I needed to go lose myself in a new culture, new foods, new routine, go somewhere nobody knew me. So obviously, I needed to go to Bali. While I was researching Bali, I came across this place that had never even crossed my mind, and before you knew it, I was on a plane to Thailand. Plane ticket has been bought. Great, now I was stuck, except alone in another country I knew nothing about. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the time I was like, what the frick am I doing? But I just kept waking up and doing the things. And you'll start to feel a tiny bit better, like a tiny bit normal, and then you feel like you're back at square one again, and again, and again. You feel like none of it's worth it, but it is because you do. You do smile again. You do enjoy food again. You do find the energy to be creative again, to do the things you love. You'll find that joy in living again. You just gotta keep going. I'm not happy here. When I got rid of all the distractions in my life, I was faced with the question, who was I without YouTube? Without subscribers, without friends, a degree, grades, or a significant other, without my social media, or my manager telling me how much I was worth, without my past always getting in the way, or the doubts of what the future would look like? Who was I without my body size or the clothes I owned or obsessing over food, without all these things I always measured my worth with? Without it all, who was I? I had no freaking clue, but now I could find out. There was a lot of waiting, waiting in lines, waiting on boats, waiting to feel better. But with all that waiting, I got pretty good at being patient. So while I waited, I explored new cities, thought long and hard about nothing. I cried at the colors in the sky. I found comfort in being alone, found peace on my silent morning walks. I ate food with my heart. I felt connected to the ocean, the birds, the winds, the sky. I started to feel alive. I started to find this clarity. I'm not overwhelmed anymore with like needing to figure stuff out. It cost me a lot more than just my time. I just kind of like let go of the idea that like these specific things define me. It doesn't matter. Like none of this stuff matters. Like I don't care. Like why did I care for 22 years? I just realized I've been really living the wrong way. I think I've always just never thought I was good enough ever, ever, ever. The other day I was driving to my friend's house and I was like asking my mom, I'm like, oh my God, I don't have a gift to bring to her. And she's like, why do you think you have to gift your friends things every time you see them? And I'm like, none of my friends give me gifts when I see them. Like I love just being with them. I've just never felt like my presence was enough. So I had to somehow add to that by giving them a gift or buying them dinner or buying them something. I'm beating myself up over being a failure because I'm losing like momentum on social media and I don't have the energy to like create and I'm like this is not who you are as a human like you are not just a YouTube channel YouTube is not my whole life but more importantly YouTube was never the problem. YouTube didn't hurt me or bully me or overwork me or tell me that I was worthless. It wasn't YouTube's job to love me. Just it was mine. I 
one of the days I was doing yin yoga, which is basically just breathing and focusing on breathing and then a lot more breathing. And I had this moment. I think the instructor said something as simple as, don't force it, do what you can, it's okay, you're okay, what you can do right now is enough. Her words like cast a spell on me. I physically felt myself accept that I am a flawed, emotional, sensitive, messy, beautiful human that is just trying her best. And I've always read those words and shared those words and told myself those words, but this was the first time I really felt those words. I just felt my body like fill with compassion towards my younger self. And I was crying for her, like legitimately on the yoga mat, bawling my eyes out. For the little girl, I told every day that she had to be smarter, work harder, look skinnier, or no one would love her. To suck in her stomach to make everyone else happy and to change herself to fit in. The one I've spent my life molding instead of letting her just be. I've never allowed myself to just be. So to every single one of you who's ever felt like they're just not good enough, you can just be. It's okay where you are, what you feel, what you did, what you didn't, what you have, what you don't. To be yourself, to choose yourself, the way you look, the way you love, the size you are, your worries, your fears, your sadness, it's okay. Please let yourself be human, let yourself breathe, let yourself accept yourself. And you are enough. Life really is short. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. The future you're dedicating your life to work towards may never come. You might spend your entire life waiting for the right body before you allow yourself to love it. You are not a project. You don't have to be getting better or growing every day. You are not a problem to be fixed. And you do not need to earn or deserve your own love. Life's too short to not find ways to enjoy the process of living. That does not mean drop out of school. I do not want to be responsible for that. The answer isn't quitting your job, dropping out of school, traveling the world, and falling in love. This may be super unsatisfying, but I swear one day, it just hit me. I fully just surrendered to where I was and how I was feeling, and I made peace with myself as I was. I really, really did. I didn't find myself, but I did find how to take care of myself. I found a friend and a home in myself. I found the kind of life I wanted to live, not one where I fill it with more and more and chase achievement after achievement to feel momentarily happy, but one without pressure to constantly prove myself, one where I can slow down, one rooted from within me and not rooted in the things I own or do or lose. I was looking at all of this wrong. I was afraid to slow down because I was afraid to lose the most important things in my life, but really I needed to slow down in order to see what was actually important. One day I just decided decided I was gonna be on my own side. I was going to focus on loving the people in my life instead of dwelling on the ones who left. That not everything and everyone I lose is a loss. That my desire to be valued was just a projection of the lack of value I had for myself. I was going to take care of the body I have just the way she is because that's exactly the way she's supposed to be. And I was gonna take care of my mind and my mental health like it was the most important thing in my life because it is. I am enough and I am exactly where I'm supposed to be and I have enough time. Happiness. It's not the reward you get when everything is finally perfect. It really is all around us every day. Sometimes you just need to slow down enough to notice. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to keep going, keep trying, keep showing up. I just wanted to say, whatever pain you're in right now will not compare to the peace you feel one day. Your pain is not for nothing and you kind of just have to believe it. You deserve the same amount of love and compassion from yourself at your lowest lows, days that feel impossible and you lose yourself a little bit, to your happiest moments where you wake up feeling grateful to be alive. Both of those people, to every version of yourself in between, they deserve love. Don't take your happiness lightly. Don't neglect your body when it's tired or hungry or stressed. Listen and be kind to it. Feel your feelings. Acknowledge the way you're speaking about yourself, even if it's not very nice, and choose not to believe it. Choose to challenge it. Rewrite the way you think about yourself for yourself. You branded yourself to be curated, to be perfect, to be the clean lines and everything. And I think there's this inner part of you that I hear in our sessions, which you're like, I just want to show the reality, the real Linda. Things don't have to be perfect. And I think there is this evolution that you're going to have to rebrand yourself. But I think right now, the season you're in is very much part of the process where you're like accepting of those messy parts, those parts that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is a part of it. But I think when you get to the part where you're going to rebrand, it's going to make you an even stronger brand. You're going to make it part of your story. It's not ready to speak yet. And that's okay.
This is gonna be so fucking beautiful by the end of it. I know it. Sorry for my language, but I just know it. I know it's going to be. Like, this is hard. This is messy. It's confusing, but there's still light. Like, that's what I hear when you're talking. Like, it's confusing, but you still know where you're going. I don't have all the answers. Heck, I'm 22. All the answers I have are probably wrong. I don't know why I felt like I had to have the answers in the first place. Why I felt so much pressure to be healed and complete and perfect. I'm just me, and that's all I really want to be. Just another human with a boring, wonderful life filled with boring, wonderful things. Who knows very little about what there is to know, but is learning. I've learned you can be so grateful and still be sad. You can have everything and still feel empty. You can achieve all your goals and still feel unworthy. You can appreciate your body and still have insecurities. You can love your job and kids and family and friends and life and still need a break. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And you can have a thousand, a hundred thousand, or a million people appreciate, admire, and love you. And none of it's gonna matter until you decide you are worthy of that love. A solo trip doesn't heal you. The healing really happens in the silence, in the nothing moments, the sunsets and people watching, falling in love with food all over again, witnessing just how big the world is and knowing there's so much more of it you'll get to see. The random conversations with strangers you just happen to cross paths with, miles away from both your homes and knowing there's so many more people you're going to meet and conversations you're gonna have. The cuts and scrapes you heal from that remind you to thank your body. The homesickness that reminds you how loved you are. The time you just spend existing that remind you you're okay. The content you stop seeing when you stop comparing, measuring, overthinking, when you start appreciating, reflecting, accepting, forgiving, you begin healing. You don't notice the process of healing. One day you just realize you haven't cried in a while. You feel whole again, different, but whole. I don't know, I think when things change inside you, that's when things change around you. I was lost for a little while, and I was consumed by the toxic parts of social media that I forgot the beauty and strength and love it offers to you. This community, you make me strong, you help me heal, remind me of my worth, make me so happy. From the very beginning, this has always just been about that. A wholesome, amazing, beautiful group of friends. A place to escape to when the world is loud. A place to create without fear of rejection. A place to share ugly, sweaty faces and real, beautiful bodies. A place that will celebrate you. A place to go when your heart hurts. A place you don't have to feel alone. A place that reminds me I'm loved. I'm enough. A place I can return to, lean on, a safe space. A family. My goal is to lead a happy, healthy, balanced life where I'm learning to love my body again and again every single day. Stop! Bed. Oh, I'm sweaty. Shower. <laughs> Make yourself some pancakes. You are in that with this. Caroline Gerb Gerb Gerbman. Everything needs an ending. We need change to grow. No, nope. I'm gonna miss it, but I'm also excited for all the new memories to come. <laughs> Get under it. We can't move forward in our lives if we're constantly holding on to what happened and what if. Happy New Year. I hope you got something out of that, or you just enjoyed watching me eat because I enjoyed eating for you. Remember all the beautiful things you still have in your life, and just because the chapter is over doesn't mean everything ends. You guys teach me every day how to treat myself, how to really actually love myself. Thank you for waiting for me, and thank you for being a part of my story. This trip, this break, these months, it didn't heal me, it just helped me find my way back to you. And this is really just the beginning.